I don't think I've ever had to count calories in my life. And oh my God, it's squeezy day! I don't know if I can continue a show. Like instead of paying for therapy, I think I could just sit and watch a window be squeegeed and like repeat a mantra to myself and I might be cured. It, it is very zen. Tune in to the Jessica Benson Show with CJ Hurt live every weekday at 8 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Kim Riley, nicknamed the Rattler. He was finally inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Mike, when you saw that, what went through your mind? 65 interceptions, right? I mean, I was top five all time in the NFL. What took so long to get that man his flowers in, in, in the Pro Football Hall of Fame? Get all of your HBCU sports and culture news by tuning in to HBCU Huddle with CJ Hurt and Mike Wallace. New episodes drop every Thursday on GrindCityMedia.com, YouTube, and Spotify. Hey! Which NBA players could we tackle in a football game? My number one. Okay, before I say his name, one, he's small. Two, I just like want to tackle him because like <laughs> you annoy me. Okay. My number I one. I have the same person here. Is it Trey Young? Yeah, it's Trey Young. Yeah, I want to tackle Trey Young, and I think I could. IMHO with Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Wright Johnson, on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Game number one at FedEx Forum, the home opener, the New Orleans Pelicans. They've put New Orleans in the last couple of seasons in some key matchups, put them on national TV. They're trying to develop that rivalry between these two teams that are so close together. Hey, Grizzlies fans, be sure to tune in to Grizzby, where the panel and I break down all things Grizzlies and take a look at the rest of the NBA as well. The show is live every Wednesday, 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Grind City Media presents The Gary Parish Show on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Now, here's your host, Gary Parish. All right. I'm here. My name's Gary Parrish. I'm speaking to you from FedEx Forum, downtown Memphis. CJ Hurts over there producing the program. Glad he's with me. Glad you're with me. Hope you're getting through the day best you can. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed our first full weekend of football. We had college football all day Saturday, the NFL all day on Sunday. Alabama lost. Memphis won. Colorado is 2-0 and under Coach Prime. We'll talk about all of it momentarily. First, though, quickly, let me set today's schedule for you. Michael Eves, he hosts Sports Center for ESPN. He's going to join me in the next segment. Also got a new show launching today, 2 o'clock Central on ESPN. It's called The Blitz. Going to cover all things big in college football and the NFL. That's 2 o'clock Central on ESPN. Debuts this afternoon. Before he does that, Michael Eves is going to be here with me in about 20 minutes. When I finish talking with Mike, we go take a break, come back, do five more things you need to know, at which point we're going to discuss five previously undiscussed stories among them. Team USA lost to Canada this weekend and thus failed to medal at the FIBA World Cup. That's not good. Hilariously, Team USA got destroyed by uh, former Grizzly Dylan Brooks. Scored a game-high 39 points. What in the world? We'll discuss that wild development in about 40 minutes. Coco Goff and Novak Djokovic. Those are your U.S. Open winners. Fun weekend of tennis in New York City. Spend some time on that in just a bit. Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis are under fire for writing letters of support. Convicted rapist Danny Masters. Probably shouldn't have done that. There's an important lesson in there. I'll tell you what it is in the third segment. Penny Hardaway landed a commitment from a top 100 prospect in the class of 2024 this morning. I'll tell you about him a little later on in the show. And Mel Tucker. Woo boy. He's been suspended as Michigan State's football coach. It's now clear he'll never coach there again. Based on the wording in his contract, Stu probably just cost himself $80 million. Big yikes. I'll walk you through that troubling situation during a segment we call Five More Things You Need to Know, then we will eventually do GP's carryout and we'll call it a day. So that's the rundown. 
We got a lot to get to, but I, I did want to start by first thanking Rob Fisher for filling in last week while I was away. I got out of town for a few days with the family, unplugged just a little bit. So thanks again to uh, Fish for holding things down in this chair in my absence. It was nice to step away, but it's also nice to be back after what was the second real weekend of college football, which is where I want to start today. In the SEC, some notable results. Tennessee beat Austin P 30-13. Ole Miss beat Tulane 37-20. Mississippi State beat Arizona 31-24. Arkansas beat Kent State 28-6. Auburn beat Cal 14-10. And Alabama lost to Texas in Tuscaloosa 34-24. Let's stop here for a second. Alabama, just a rough night against the top 15 team, CJ, or is that the first real indication that it's about to be a rough season for Nick Saban? Oh, uh. At that part, I'm, I'm not sure. I think that so much focus is on the mill roll situation and what the quarterback is doing that we aren't paying attention to the rest of Alabama's roster. It's not often that you get a quarterback to throw for over 300 yards and a handful of touchdowns against an Alabama defense. That's Nick Saban secondary. Nick Saban prides himself on the defensive backs, and they're getting torched. I think that this is a larger problem for Alabama this year. By that, I mean they might go nine and three, that's right. eight and four. Yeah. Like that's 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 a down year even, Alabama football. But even that seems extreme. Like here's the thing: watching Saturday night, I think most people did. Primetime game, two big brands, just an awesome scene. Um, it, it if it wasn't the first massive college football game of the season, it, it, it certainly felt like it was um, uh, among the first massive college football games of of the season. And Alabama just didn't look good. Mm. They didn't look good. I mean it. Like even as they were losing much of the game, it never felt like, well, just wait till they turn it on. It was like, are they really capable of turning it on? They didn't look the part. And some of that was the quarterback, but I'm with you. It was other places uh, as well. So it didn't look like, regardless of, they, like, there was still a scenario where they could have won that game in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Regardless of whether they could have won the game or not. You know, you, you break up a pass instead of, a, instead of letting a long touchdown. You, uh, you, you break off a run instead of you know, losing three yards uh, on, 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 you know, on first down. Whatever. There, there was a, you take a couple plays, you flip them, they could win that game. Even if they win that game, they didn't look good. Mm -hmm. But then they end up losing the game at home. That's the bad. The good is that, according to Massey ratings right now, Alabama is still projected to be favored in every remaining regular season game. And by at least 14 points. Again, according to the Massey ratings. Even Tennessee? Yes. Even Tennessee. Alabama, in the Massey ratings, is projected to beat Tennessee 37-23 in Tuscaloosa on October 21st. So, it, 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 it's possible two things can be true at the, at the same time. Alabama didn't look good. Might not be as good as we're used to, but still could just run through the rest of this regular season and be sitting as a one-loss team, um, you know, heading into possibly an SEC championship game and beyond that possibly a, a college football playoff. So I'm not ready to bury Alabama or Nick Saban yet, but there's no getting around the, the I think, fact that on Saturday night against a quality opponent at home, they didn't look the part. Locally, Memphis went to Jonesboro and beat Arkansas State 37 to three. Now, it was just Arkansas State, and it was just a week after Bethune-Cookman. But either way, the Tigers are 2-0. and Can't do any better than that. They've outscored their opponents 93-17 in these two games. They've allowed zero offensive touchdowns. To whatever extent you believed in Memphis before this season, do you believe more or less in the Tigers after watching two games? I'd say yeah. Same. It's that this for this slate of games for the Tigers it feels a lot like preseason whatever sport right. where you can't make me excited about you, you can't impress me, but you can give me cause for concern. Right. And so so far, for whatever that's worth, the Tigers have given me uh very little to damn near no calls for concern. Right. I I'm with you. I think same. I, I don't I'm not gonna get excited over blowout victories over Bethune Cookman and Arkansas State, but I can focus on the positive, which is mm -hmm. um they didn't struggle. Yeah. You know, they they uh they they controlled every uh, both games from you know the the, the op opening possession for the most part. 
Um, again, they haven't allowed an offensive touchdown. That's encouraging, regardless of the opposition. You know, they're not the only college football team that's played two bum opponents nope. in the first two weeks of the season. And they've done everything you could reasonably expect them or want them to do against these bum opponents. Seth Hennigan, um, you know, he, he's 48 of 65 on the season, four touchdowns, two picks. His completion percentage is up to 73.8%. It was 64.1 last season. His QB rating is up to 162. It was only 144.1 last season. So those are some encouraging signs. Um, looking forward, Memphis is up to 55th in the Massey ratings right now. They are moving in the right direction. Projected to beat Navy 34-21 on Thursday. Then projected to beat Missouri 28-26. That's a big one. On September 23rd. Like in the Massey ratings, Memphis is expected to win that game. And projected to beat Boise State 28-24 on September 30th. Memphis is projected to be 5-0 and on Friday the 13th in October, heading into that night's game, a Friday night game against Tulane. So I don't know that I think any differently about this Memphis team through two games than I thought about them two weeks ago. But if you're trying to figure out how could – Memphis football actually capture the attention of the market the way it did certainly in the final year under Mike Norvell be 5 and 0 heading into a game against likely AAC favorite Tulane and who knows what would happen in that game but if you're 5 and 0 heading into that game that's one where on that Friday the 13th we'll be leading the show with that Absolutely. Memphis is playing tonight on national television against Tulane, and the Tigers are trying to improve to six and zero. And if you go, if you start six and zero with a victory over Tulane, depending on what happened with Tulane between now and then, what's their quarterback situation look like? They obviously lost to Ole Miss, but did not have their starting quarterback. If if I think this is true, if you're six and zero with a win over Tulane, you're probably ranked. You you probably you're getting votes, and you might be. Find yourself in the AP poll. And I know like, there's somebody saying, don't get ahead of yourself, and I'm not. I'm just saying that according to the Massey ratings, Memphis is supposed to win each of its next three games. And if you do that, you're 5-0 heading into the game against Tulane. And if you beat Tulane, then you're 6-0 with a victory over Tulane. That might put you in the top 20. It's not far-fetched. That's what, Am I predicting it? No, I'm not predicting it. But it's, it's not far-fetched. Uh, what does the start mean for Memphis? I'm not sure. But it's as good a start as you could reasonably expect to have against this type of of competition so far so good you'd also have a win over an sec team in that mix there you go and so like six and oh with Tulane, who's predicted and projected to win the american and missouri like that 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 probably gets you, get you that'll get you ranked that, that should get you ranked and i can get ahead of myself yeah. i'm not a coach or a player so i don't take it one there game you go. At time. yeah i don't need i don't need to take it one game at a nope. time either and again i'm not saying if they beat tennessee and then beat uh, Oregon, and it's not, it's like if, if they beat these very beatable teams on their schedule, mm -hmm. that this one computer says they're supposed to, to, to win these games. If they just do what this one computer says they're supposed to do, they're 5 and 0 heading to Tulane. That'd be a, a fun place to be heading what, into what that was weekend. The, what were their first six? I can't remember exactly when game day came through an SMU. Right. That 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 weekend. Yeah. I, I feel like it was very similar to this, where it was a handful of American teams. And I think they had to win over Ole Miss that Maybe year. Maybe that and was it. So, right. like, win over SEC team early. Yeah. Don't lose. Yeah. That, 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 that usually gets you right. That'll usually get you where you're going. So, we'll see. But um, off to an encouraging uh, start. The last thing I want to touch on in this segment is what is undeniably the biggest story in college football. And that is Colorado starting 2-0 and with a victory over TCU and then a blowout of Nebraska uh, with Deion Sanders more commonly known these days as Coach Prime, at the helm. I don't know how much people paid attention to what Dion did at Jackson State, but, you know, as you, a co-host of the HBCU Huddle, mm -hmm. you're very familiar. And that wasn't just all flash and celebrity. He built a quality football program very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. They, they, just all of a sudden, just boom like that. They he, they had that COVID year where they played in the spring. Looked like, oh, okay, that's going to be rough for prime. And then that second year, boom, they took off. And so he gets the opportunity at Colorado. Colorado's been terrible. Uh, it was terrible last season. They're not supposed to be good. Their they're win, projected win total for this season, Colorado, heading into the season, was like 2.5. Mm -hmm. supposed to not be good. Then they go win 
Um, their opener against a ranked TCU team that played in the college football playoff last season. Not the same team, but the same program. And then they backed that with a blowout victory over a rival. And they are 2-0. and They're nationally ranked. And they have penetrated parts of the, not just sports world, but world that don't often get penetrated by college football stories. And the best example in my own life to underline this is something that I experienced on Saturday morning. And I tweeted about it, like I said on Jess's show this morning. I wish I wouldn't have because it just invited a bunch of nonsense <laughs> into my timeline. And, and so I would, I'd, I'd prefer to just keep it to myself and we could talk. But I, I was fascinated by it. And so I wanted to share it. And I just was interested in what the responses would be. Um, Saturday morning, pretty typical Saturday morning at my house. Wife's getting up, ready to go to her store. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I got the kids up. We're going to kick it around. That. We're going to do what we do all day. And um, everybody's in the kitchen. Like breakfast is bring prepared eggs, t- bacon, whatever. And my kids, which is typical, they both have their iPads in, in front of them because they're kids and this is America. So usually whatever they're watching, it just goes in one ear and out the I'm not even – it's just – some video that a six-year-old would watch or a nine-year-old would watch. It's just my six-year-old, though, Lou, is I'm I'm overhearing that just as I'm in the kitchen, it's a Travis Hunter video. And he's watching it over and over again. I hear the same words. Hey, I'm Travis Hunter, the number one prospect and the number one player in the country, something like that. Yeah. Just keep hearing. And I finally I'm like, what does he even know what he's watching? Why is he watching it over and over again? And I said, Lou, what are you watching? He said, Travis Hunter. I'd never heard him say a college football player. Ever. He, he doesn't know Caleb Williams. I asked him. Hi, reigning Heisman Trophy winner. I said, what are you watching? He says, uh, Travis Hunter. I said, who, who's, who's Travis Hunter? Oh, he's a football player. He's really good. He's so good. I said, yeah, I know. Who does he play for? Buffaloes. He plays for the Buffaloes. Yeah, he plays for Coach Prime. I've never heard him say a college football coach before. Not Nick Saban, not Kirby Smart, not Lane Kiffin, not Ryan Silverfield. Nobody. I've never, this is, I've never talked about college football with my six-year-old son ever. He knows about the Mets and Pete Alonzo because of me. He knows about John Morant and the Grizzlies because of me. Um, nothing else sports really gets forced upon my children. They just sort of pick up whatever they pick up on. And my son was fascinated with Travis Hunter and Coach Prime. Asked me if he could get a chain because he loves chains. My little, kid, <laughs> my little guy wears chains. He just does. I don't know. And he asked me to get a, a chain like Coach Prime's. And I was just like, them picking his brain a little bit. Like, how'd you, how'd you start watching this? I just showed up on YouTube. And as the algorithms work, if you watch something on YouTube three times, mm-hmm. next thing you know, it's just popping up. On a, it just pop something. So he watched Travis Hunter video a few times. Next thing you know, there are more Travis Hunter videos, more Colorado videos, more Coach Prime videos. Now he's watching all this stuff. And I said, buddy, do you even know like the Buffaloes play in like 90 minutes? They had an 11 o'clock kickoff. It's like 9.30 in the morning. He's like, oh, no. I said, yeah, you want to watch him? Yeah. We sat and watched Colorado, <laughs> Nebraska, me and my six-year-old. This is not the type of thing we normally do. Like uh, we might be watching football, but that means he's on his iPad on the couch right. while I'm watching football. <laughs> right. No, we sat in my office and watched a Colorado football game. He subsequently asked if we could go to one. What? He wants to go to Boulder, Colorado to a football Does he game. Go with Boulder. <laughs> no. Of course not. He didn't know anything about anything two weeks ago. And I was just fascinated at how this has penetrated his world. How did Coach Prime, Travis Hunter, Shadir Sanders, Shadir Sanders reach my six year old? And is that unique to me, or is that happening all over the country? I think it's happening all over the country. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've seen anything like this Colorado story. I don't think we've seen anything like this Coach Prime story. Whatever you thought about it before, it has to be taken seriously now, and it is the biggest show in sports. I don't know where it's going from here. They've got a three-game stretch coming up after their next game where they could go loss on loss, right? This could flatten out a little bit, but – the phenomenon that we're watching right now is real. This is this is penetrating places that it n- otherwise these types of stories don't 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 like. Mike Norvell just had a big win at Florida State, right? Mm-hmm. My kid didn't ask me about it. He don't know anything about it. He does not know anything about college football, but he knows Coach Prime, and he knows Travis Hunter, and he knows about the Buffaloes now, and that is incredible to me how quickly and how effectively Deion Sanders has 
has become the biggest thing in college sports. I'm going to talk to Michael Eves about it next. The Braves have been the hottest team in baseball. The, their June was just phenomenal. And you look at the numbers, the Braves are the betting favorite to win the World Series. The Braves are like clearly been one of the best teams in the league, if not the best team in baseball all season. And like I don't know how to pick against them. And they're going to get better. The Odds Couple with Rob Fisher, Lang Whitaker, John Roser, and CJ Hurt live Thursdays at 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Game 26 is going to be at Pelicans. The Pelicans game is not the 25th game of the season or yes. 26th game. Oh, my God, Roser. Are you going to act like people haven't done this a thousand times? Are you looking at last year's schedule? Holy crap, I am looking at last year's schedule. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> the Chris Vernon Show, presented by Caesars Sportsbook, live weekdays at noon on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. No matter what time of year it is, there's always something exciting happening at FedEx Forum in Memphis. And when you want tickets to the hottest concerts, sporting events, and more, you can find them at Ticketmaster. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum, Ticketmaster has a wide selection of tickets available for all the events you can't miss. Check out what's happening at FedEx Forum and get tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. Com. Don't miss Stevie Nicks. Live at FedEx Forum. Center on ESPN and also host of a new show, The Monday Blitz, which debuts today at 2 o'clock Central on ESPN. It's an hour-long show. Going to be recapping all the big stories in the NFL and college football. You'll be able to see Michael Eves at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Right now, he's here with me. Michael Eves, it's GP. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, brother. Just got back from a little R and R in Mexico. I got a I got a new tan to rock this week for the new <laughs> show, so I'm feeling good. What part of Mexico did you go to? Uh, Cabo San Lucas. There you go. I saw somebody super famous down there um, over the weekend as well. So you were rubbing, uh, you were rubbing elbows, uh, I- at least in the same community with somebody I saw on TMZ. But the name escapes me now. We might have, we, we might have been in the same place. You never know. <laughs> Talking to Michael Ease uh, here on Grind City Media. I want to start with what has become the biggest story in college football, and that is what Deion mm-hmm. Sanders has done at Colorado. Mike, I, I tweeted about this over the weekend. Some people question the sincerity of it just because I guess that's social media. Hand to heart, it's a 100% true story. I don't make up stories about my kids. We're sitting there Saturday morning. It's about 9.30. We're all in the kitchen. My little guy, six years old, is on his iPad. We're cooking eggs and bacon, sausage, the same deal all over America is happening. And my kid, who is typically watching Videos on YouTube that I couldn't care less about and don't really even mm-hmm. understand is watching Travis Hunter videos. And I, I sort of know, I'm like, what? and he watches it over and over again. And I'm sort of like just listening. And I finally stop at him. I said, what do you, hey, Lou, what are you watching? He said, Travis Hunter. I said, how do you know Travis Hunter? He said, he plays for the Buffaloes. I said, what do you know about the Buffaloes? He said, well, Coach Prime is their coach. And this is more or less the conversation we're having. And I was just fascinated how this has somehow my kid does, has never asked me about college football before. He doesn't know Nick Saban, Kirby Smart. I quizzed him. Hey, have you ever heard of Caleb Williams? He said no. 
I said, do you know any football coaches? Any? He said, Coach Prime. It's literally the only coach, football coach he knows. What do you make of, of how this has become a massive sports story? But it also seems to be, and I don't want to overstate it just based off this one experience, but it seems to be reaching people who otherwise wouldn't care about college football or Colorado. This is a real phenomenon we're watching right now. It's another example of how captivating personalities um, can really transcend um, anything, whether it's sports, entertainment, politics, what have you, right? There are just certain people that have this attraction that other people tap into, or they are, um, they, they gravitate towards, and sometimes, Gary, they don't know why, but they just know that this person is someone that is entertaining or is knowledgeable or something, and they just can't help but to watch. And then from that, your son is a good example in this social media age. You, you can be captivated by Deion Sanders, and then it leads you to what he's actually doing. And oh, by the way, on his team, he has other captivating personalities as well, whether it's Travis Hunter or his son Shadur Sanders. Uh, but again, like in our society, we are captivated by, I mean, look at Beyonce's tour. Yeah. Look at Taylor Swift's tour. Like people have been just captivated by the personalities and the shows that these ladies put on and the very similar dynamic to what Deion Sanders is doing there in Colorado because it, there's so many things at play here. He was a dynamic personality. He was in college as a pro and even as an adult post his career. He's been a captivating personality on television. You pay attention to him. What he did at Jackson State brought so much more attention to HBCUs than it had been in the last several decades. And now he goes to a Colorado team that won one game last year, one and 11, and all the hype and all he does as a coach the first two games is exceed the hype because no one thought they'd probably win at TCU. Then they come home, they beat a Nebraska team that struggled the last decade or so. But nonetheless, it's not just that they're winning, Gary. It's also how they're doing it with players such as Shadur Sanders and Travis Hunter. It's captivating America. There's no question about it. And on our, on our new show today, we're diving into that very thing because it is something that we can't really – imagine we've seen in the last several years and now like I just start thinking through it and I don't know where this season goes because Colorado looks legitimate right. but there's a three-game stretch coming up after the Colorado State game where they, we could look up and they could go from three and oh to three and three very reasonably I don't know where this season is going but I really think this thing is is legitimate like I put no ceiling on it whatsoever if you told me Deion Sanders was in the college football playoff Two years from now, I'd be like, I guess I could see that. That doesn't make that 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 makes sense to me. Well, here's what's going to determine that. Obviously, um, how good is his coaching staff? For yeah. sure, right? You got to find that out. And he does have some good guys on his staff, clearly. But also, think about how captivating this thing is, Gary, for the best high school players in the country, right? Now. Right. Right. Stars want to hang out with other stars. That's just how it goes. And if I'm a four-star, five-star recruit looking at what's going on in Colorado right now. Granted, the entire season will determine that. Why would I not look at them compared to all the other schools that are also up there? Because are we talking about Georgia as much as we're talking about Colorado right now? We're not. <laughs> they're the defending champions, and they're the number one ranked team in the country. But we're talking more about Colorado. And for guys who are, who are wannabe stars, they want to go shine. And where do you think you can get the most shine right now through the first two weeks of the season? It's at Colorado. And no one would have thought that coming into the season, even with Dion going there. Yeah, and just, again, to, to circle back to the, my own personal experience, my six-year-old has never asked me to go to an Ole Miss game, to go to a Memphis game, to go to a Mississippi State game, really to go to any football game. And at one point on Saturday, he asked if we could go watch the Buffaloes play. Like, that's where we're at with right? this thing. It just looks cool to – and it's not just to a six-year-old. It, it looks cool to a 46-year-old. But it also looks yeah. cool, to, to your point, to every – like, if you are a high-profile uh, high school prospect right now, like, it, I, I, I guarantee you if Deion Sanders picks up the phone and reaches out to you, you're at least, you're at least considering going to Boulder, Colorado now. That's where we're at with this thing, and it's just it, – it's – it's not only an incredible story, it's, it's a fun story to follow. Yeah, it is, be because it is captivating. Now, look, you mentioned social media earlier. Here's yeah. the thing we know about uh, American society. There are so many people that are hating on this entire oh, yeah. thing 
because they thought it was going to fail from the very beginning. Before they played a game, before he had coached his players in a workout, they thought Deion Sanders would fail in Colorado. And so they are just praying for that first loss or the or that two or three game losing streak because they want to hate on something that other people love. That's just some people's human nature, right? Yeah. But as it is right now, it is captivating all of college football so much so the game day is going to be there Saturday for their next game. And that is huge because they haven't been there in forever because there's no reason to be there. But now they're going. Fox's show was there uh, last Saturday, right? So everyone's trying to capitalize on what's going on in Colorado, just indicative of how big of a deal it is. Talking to Michael Eaves on Grind City Media in prime time on Saturday night. Texas went down to Tuscaloosa and beat Alabama by double digits fairly convincingly, or at least Alabama uh, was never in control of that game. This isn't something no. Texas stole late. This is something Texas looked like it was capable of winning right from the jump. Um, did we learn more about Texas, more about Alabama? Are you concerned about the Crimson Time? What did you make of what we saw Saturday night? I think we learned more about Alabama, quite honestly. And if you remember the last year, Texas was in that game as well. And they probably thought a play or here, here or there, they probably should have won that game. So they go into this rematch with a lot of confidence. And their quarterback is clearly better than Alabama's quarterback right now. In college football, so often, Gary, it comes down to your skill players and especially your quarterback, as we all know. And Texas clearly has a better quarterback than Alabama does. Now, the thing about Nick Saban that we have seen through the years, if they have an early loss, an early struggle, and you count them out, you're doing so at your own peril. That's not to say that this same team that we saw Saturday can't rebound, fix some things, and be in the conversation for the college football playoff at the end of the year. But in this time and space right now, it's clear that their quarterback is not up to standards of the top quarterbacks in the country, where it's Caleb Williams or Shador Sanders or Quinn Ewers, obviously, to put Alabama in that top five or six teams in the country right now. And I think what the voters did to move them down to number 10 is probably accurate based on what we've seen the first two weeks of the season. But again, Nick Saban's history said, if you count them out too early, you're probably doing so at your own peril because he has a way, he and his staff, of fixing things really quickly, and all of a sudden they're a different team a month or six weeks from now. The Monday Blitz debuts today at 2 o'clock on ESPN. It covers uh, the biggest stories in college football and the NFL. Michael Ease will be hosting it. And I imagine, uh, don't let, put me in charge of your rundown, but I imagine at some point you're going to mention that in primetime last night the Dallas Cowboys beat the New York Giants 40 to nothing. How humiliating was that uh, for, for uh, that Giants organization? I mean, it's it's embarrassing, and I don't use that term a lot when I talk about you know things relative to sports, but that was very embarrassing for that franchise. Um, it, it's a very proud franchise, and I'll do respect to who's going to play later tonight on Monday Night Football. The Giants aren't the Jets, right. you know what I mean? Like they are a storied franchise with multiple Super Bowl wins. Um, they are the they are the team in New York, and Dallas came in there and just utterly destroyed them, like forty to nothing. Like, and granted, like Dallas defense is great; it may be the best defense in the NFL. They scored two touchdowns, one on special teams, one on one on defense. But like, Dak Prescott didn't have two hundred yards passing. They didn't have a one hundred yard uh, receiver. They didn't have a one hundred yard rusher, and they beat them forty to nothing. <laughs> and Daniel Jones looked terrible. Saquon Barkley probably didn't get the ball enough, but to lose like that, a division game, Gary, to a rival on your home turf like that, 40 to nothing, strictly just embarrassing. You mentioned tonight we get Jets, uh, Bills in a highly anticipated Monday night football game. It obviously is Aaron Rodgers' debut uh, with the New York Jets. What are you expecting uh, tonight from Aaron Rodgers? It's going to be interesting to see what his true impact is on this roster, especially offensively, in terms of getting a younger team ready to compete at the expectations that Aaron Rodgers brings with him, right? Everyone's saying him coming here is changing the entire dynamic of this team and maybe this franchise. Well, how soon do we see that, if we see it at all? Because that's a, that's a lofty thing to handle for guys who haven't been in that position in quite some time. But let's not forget they are playing the Bills, a team that has been in the hunt for the Super Bowl the last couple of years. They are led by a quarterback who's going to be in the MVP conversation again. So as much attention as everyone's putting on Aaron Rodgers for obvious reasons, a Hall of Famer going to a new team in New York City, the Bills are still the better team on paper coming into this. And so if 
if Rodgers and the Jets can pull off an upset, it'll be huge conversation the rest of the week. But if they lose, you're like, yeah, they're probably supposed to because they're playing the better team in the Bills. But for me, it's really is the the influence that Aaron Rodgers is going to have on this team. Because look, he did more in the in training camp and preseason than he's done in recent years back when he's with Green Bay. So what impact will that have on this team? Last thing before I let you go, another notable uh, result from yesterday in the NFL, Cleveland 24, Cincinnati 3. Joe Burrow last week became the highest paid player in the history of the NFL, and then he went 14 of 31 for just 82 yards, had a QB rating of 52.2. How surprised were you that Burrow and, by extension, the Bengals struggled to that extent? Well, I mean, a couple things here. One, he missed so much time in training camp. You knew there were probably going to be some issues with uh, chemistry and things of that nature. Uh, also, in his career, so far as young career in the NFL, he has gotten off to slow starts. Uh, but this was eye-opening, though. I mean, it's one thing to get off to a slow start. It's something else to throw for less than 100 yards. I think his average um, completion was like 2.6 yards. I mean, that, that's just not Joe Burrow level. That's not a guy who's also been in the MVP conversation. That's not a guy who's, you know, taking teams to the Super Bowl. That is not who Joe Burrow is. But he had been out. And, you know, sometimes early in the season, you know, Herm Edwards and I were talking about this earlier today, is that defenses are usually ahead of the game of offense when the season starts. And so maybe we need to give a little more credit here, Gary, to what Cleveland did and maybe who they're going to be. Because it's not like Deshaun Watson played lights out. Uh, but he didn't have to because the defense was so good that it made Joe Burrow look more than or less than average, I should say. Maybe not the guy who has a contract he just signed. So I think sometimes you got to give credit where it's due, and it's more about Cleveland's defense in that particular match than what we saw from Joe. That is Michael Eves. The Monday Blitz debuts this afternoon, 2 o'clock Central. He'll be hosting. You can watch it on ESPN, recapping all the big stories in the NFL and college football from over the weekend. Mike, I appreciate you being here. Glad you had a good time in Mexico, and I'll be watching you this afternoon. All right, brother. Sounds good, man. All right, I'll see you. That's Michael Eves from ESPN. Again, the Monday Blitz, new show today, 2 o'clock on ESPN. Michael Eves hosting. They'll be recapping all the big stories in college football and the NFL. They'll get to the Deion Sanders story very, very quickly. When we come back, Dylan Brooks got 39 points. What a wild thing to wake up to on a Sunday morning. Dylan Brooks got 39 points. You woke up to it. I woke up and watched it. Oh, no, I'm not that committed to it. Oh, God, the Team USA. I'm not that committed to second-rate Team USA. I figured I'd just uh, – I was going to sleep as long as I wanted to sleep, and then I'd wake up and uh, let's see what's going on. Dylan Brooks, 39 points, 7 of 8 from 3, in a victory over the United States. We didn't even get a bronze medal. But here comes LeBron to save the day, reportedly. We'll talk basketball next. Gary Parrish Show, Grind City Media. Grizzlies fans know it's the team that gives you the edge. Big River Steel does too. And much like the Grizzlies have recruited legendary talent, we want you to be part of our team. Are you ready to be part of something legendary? Then visit www. Dot BigRiverSteel.com. That's www.BigRiverSteel.com. Game 26 is going to be at Pelicans. Was the there... Pelicans game is not the 25th game of the season or yes. 26th game. Oh my God, Roser. Are you going to act like people haven't done this a thousand times? Are you looking at last year's schedule? Holy crap, I am looking at last year's schedule. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> The Chris Vernon Show, presented by Caesar Sportsbook, live weekdays at noon on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. No matter what time of year it is, there's always something exciting happening at FedEx Forum in Memphis. And when you want tickets to the hottest concerts, sporting events, and more, you can find them at Ticketmaster. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum, Ticketmaster has a wide selection of tickets available for all the events you can't miss. Check out what's happening at FedEx Forum and get tickets today at Ticketmaster.com.
Here's the SEC, the Georgia Bulldogs, a lead in that one, of course, as well. They are the only <laughs> minus at minus 115. Alabama plus 240. How many years in a row do we have to talk about Alabama needing a quarterback? They lost a lot of guys to the NFL. They they switch coordinators. How are they going to re- rebound and respond to all this adversity? And then they come out and win a national championship. The Odds Couple with Rob Fisher, Lang Whitaker, John Roser, and CJ Hurt live Thursdays at 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. At Mountain Dew, we'd like to remind you that the world as we know it would not exist without the number zero. Which is why, at Mountain Dew, we'd like to recognize the number zero for making Mountain Dew Zero Sugar possible. Even with no sugar, it packs all of the bold citrus kick Dew Nation knows and loves. It's so good, you have no reason not to try it. As in zero. Get it? Crack open an ice-cold Mountain Dew Zero Sugar. It's zero sugar. All do. ESPN for joining me in that last segment. He's with me every Monday in the second segment and, of course, is now the host of the Monday Blitz. You can watch that 2 o'clock this afternoon and every Monday on ESPN recapping uh, what was a, a fun first weekend of real football at both levels. We had college football on Saturday, the NFL on Sunday. Uh, you'll get a whole thing recapped for you. Monday Blitz, 2 o'clock, ESPN Michael Eves is your host, and he'll be back here with me next Monday in the second segment. Right now, I got five more things you need to know. Number one. Team USA lost Canada early Sunday and thus failed to medal in the FIBA World Cup. 127-118, that's your final score. Dylan Brooks got 39 points. Kidding me. (laughs) What in the world? What in the world? I, he, he, he had a really good tournament. Dylan Brooks had, if not a top five shooting performance in the tournament, top ten, absolutely. One of the highest three-point percentages in the about tournament. About 50%. And it's, and it's, but it wasn't just Dylan. I know we, we're going to talk yeah, about of course, Dylan. Yeah. But it wasn't just Dylan. Dylan goes for damn near 40. Mm-hmm. Well, you think, okay, that must mean they were trying to stop shot. He goes for 30 plus. Yeah. Like, okay, those two must have carried. Dennis Schroeder. Uh, RJ uh, Barrett uh, went uh, for 20 last, plus. Yeah, the last week they get they get you know handled by Dennis Schroeder. It's like these, But the, Dennis Schroeder didn't even have a good game. Uh, that was the thing that bothered me about the Germany game. Schroeder, he was a he was he was MVP for a reason. He uh, tore up this tournament, right? Team USA. When Germany played USA, Schroeder didn't do much of anything. They were letting Wagner and they were letting Tice. They couldn't box Tice out. Stop me if you heard that before. They couldn't rebound worth a damn. And then Aus Ors, I don't know this German yeah. dude's name. He pops up out of nowhere and starts balling on Team USA. They had a piss poor tournament losing to Germany. They should have lost to Germany in the exhibition. They lost to Lithuania, Lithuania, Germany, and, and Canada. Canada. They ended up losing three times in the FIBA World Cup. Really lost to, I don't want to say the only good teams they played but they you know, no they 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 lost to the only good teams they played right. that is a fair statement it's a reasonable thing to suggest and so the whole thing will get revamped now you're seeing that this morning and we'll get into that in a second but just I don't know I didn't get up and watch it I woke up and I start reading about it and here's an actual sentence I read from Brian Windhorst at ESPN this was a sentence in a story he wrote mm-hmm. Canada also got a statement game loudly and unexpectedly from Dylan Brooks, who scored 39 points as part of a shooting masterpiece. I never heard shooting masterpiece before connected to Dylan Brooks. So I'm not a – I don't have any professional teams that I'm a fan of. I love sports, and as such, I view them through a different sort of prism. And I – Love me some Dylan Brooks because Dylan gives me the two things that I want to see when I'm watching sports is either a good product or something hilarious. And that's Dylan. He's going to give you either A plus basketball or he's just going to do a whole bunch of goofy stuff. And that's all I need in a player. Okay. He he feeds me. I do with not. That. I do not love Dylan Brooks. I know you don't because he's on your team and he gives you way too much goofy stuff. He gives me hey, he gave me too much goofy stuff. All right, I uh, I did not love Dylan Brooks. I am I'm just being honest, not mean, just honest. 
I'm glad he's not a member of the franchise anymore. All right. But I was happy for him. Yeah. I was happy for him. Even at the expense of my country. Oh. I was I was happy for him because I've said this before. Um, I, I thought all the ridicule Dylan faced for his outrageous comments in the playoffs uh, was fair and like he deserved everything he got. Mm-hmm. All the jokes were you 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 he, earned, he earned those. You earned those. All right. Um, I'm glad that the franchise decided to move on. But I don't root against people. I root for people. I want good things for people. I don't, I don't. I know people like this who are out there and they they spend their whole day, like just hoping bad things happen to people they don't like. That's you. I don't. Oh, I hate. I hate on people. I don't. I don't. I just don't care. Like if you if things if your life's good, good for you. If it's not, that that's too bad. But I don't. I don't. My energy is not cons, is not tied up in what's going on with other people. It just isn't. Um, and I don't. I don't get any satisfaction really out of people that out of watching people not succeed. I don't I don't go, "Oh, I'm so glad that guy lost." I mean, I'm not saying I've never done it. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I I, I there are times where I'm like, "Yeah, I'm glad that guy lost." <laughs> you know, like I I'm not, I'm not but I don't live like that. And so, I'm not a Dylan Brooks fan. Um I I thought I thought certainly by the end in Memphis, the bad outweighed the good. But I can appreciate on some level watching a man just become the joke of the sport of basketball in some ways. I mean, he starts showing up in rap songs. Yeah. I mean, he's in freestyles, right? If you were trying to make a joke about a basketball player, you'd, you'd throw Dylan Brooks in there all of a sudden. Right. To go from that to having that moment that he had yesterday morning, I like that. Yeah. I, I, I think that must be... Incredibly gratifying, sure, but just also like relieving. Maybe the relief, the initial relief comes. Wow, they still gave me eighty million dollars guaranteed. Life's not so bad, but it's. I don't care how rich you are, how confident you are, how much you don't care. When the whole world's clowning you, that's not fun. I don't care. It's not fun. Dylan Brooks might have the thickest skin. It's not fun when everybody's joke goofing on you. When LeBron is saying. Yo, 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 you, you ain't built for this. Like you, you, you're just, all you're doing is setting yourself up to get humiliated. When the king is humiliating you with his play, with his mouth, and the whole world's joking on you, clowning, that's not fun. And again, he deserved it, but it's still not fun. And so to go from that, you're the joke, really, in the same calendar year, these two things happen, at least for a day. There was a day and maybe more than a day, but certainly a day where Dylan Brooks was the joke of the basketball world. Mm -hmm. And there was a day yesterday where he was the most celebrated person in the basketball world. Both those things happen. That's wild. That doesn't happen for most people in the same year or in the same life. You don't get to be the biggest joke of something and the most celebrated of something in the same year, in the same decade, in the same life. Dylan Brooks got both of those things in a matter of months. And... All jokes aside, because I listen, that's not real. 39 points, 7 of 8 shooting, 58% from 3, whatever it was, it's not real. He will have a game very early in Houston where he's 1 of 8 from 3. Mm-hmm. More likely 2 of 17 or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then all the jokes will come back. And like, But um, I did read a pretty extensive story about him yesterday. I believe it was at Yahoo Sports where he has really changed the way he shoots and made it a focus of this offseason. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why you had to wait. I don't know why it's not something you could have done last offseason. I love this guy. But he went to Toronto to train with Canada, and he there's this device. I've never even seen this device. But there's apparently a device you could put on rims, okay. and it spits out – there's been a lot of – I didn't know any of this. This was interesting to me. I didn't know any of this. I do – I'm aware that there are studies on everything. There is no question you could ask about basketball that somebody downstairs couldn't say, well, here's the data on it. I mean, they, they know everything. There is incredible data that shows, apparently, that the perfect uh, angle at which a ball from the three-point line should go through the rim is at 45 degrees. Yeah. That's what you're – that is the perfect angle to maximize the odds of this going in. The ball needs to be falling through the rim at a 45-degree angle. 
That's perfect. So there's these devices you can put on rims, and they have them in, in Toronto. They might have them right there. But it's, it gives you real-time feedback. Every time you shoot a ball through, it says 43, 47. It gives you the real number of what it went through. And he's adjusting to that in real time. Okay, okay so it's like 43. Okay, got to get 47. Got to come down. 45, 45, 45. Okay, now I'm in it. Now I know what it feels like. Now I know what it looks like. Mm-hmm. This is exactly – he apparently has put in real work yeah. with Team Canada about, yes, shot selection. And he was better with that. He just was in the FIBA World Cup. He just was about better shot selection mm-hmm. and – actually not just trying to make threes, but follow me here, trying to shoot three-pointers that fall at a 45-degree angle. That's specific. Now, in basketball world, I'm confident there's people out there, yeah, this is a normal thing. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. That, it, it, it is. High, that, I, I know high schools is who that, have. Is that, is that the, it's not unique to Dylan Brooks. I know, but it is something Dylan Brooks made a priority this offseason. Mm-hmm. And – Small sample size. He's got to play 82 game schedule. We'll see what we'll see what it looks like. But small sample size in an international competition. He, it, it, it the work paid off. The work showed up. And if you're Houston, you got to be thrilled about it. And then also, I think, and we kind of heard this from a lot of Grizzlies players too. But like for all the nonsense that he brings to the table, those guys at Can- Team Canada, they were like, I'll go to war with this guy any day. Like I'll go to war with this guy. Like I know what he's about. He's gonna be there to fight. He'll feel. He's gonna be in the fight. All right. He'll be in the fight. He might. He he might start the fight. He'll start the fight. Yeah. He'll probably throw some questionable punches. Right. Hell, you might get hit in the face by a Dylan Brooks punch because <laughs> right, right. he's just swinging wildly. But yeah. he's he's there to fight. You might lose the fight because of him. Oh yeah. But he's oh. go, but he's gonna yeah, be in the fight. He's, he's gonna fight. He's gonna be in the fight. And there's something to be said for that. You yes. know, there's something to be said for that. And so th- this is one thing I've always said about Dylan Brooks. As frustrating as you would get by him, not you, but just anybody in general, like. There was good with the bad. Mm-hmm. I thought by the end the bad outweighed the good, but there was always good. And part of it was he's going to show up every night. He want, plays hard. He wants the assignment. Like, hey, let me chase LeBron around. Let me chase Shea Gilgis Alexander around. Might not go well every time, but he wants it. And he'll he'll exert the energy to try to do it. There's value in that. Uh, you know, a little more than twenty million dollars a year. It appears, <laughs> at least according to the Rockets. So I was happy for him, and now we get to see. What happens with USA basketball? Because they all jumped on social media last night, and it, it almost felt like, "All right, enough's enough. Here we come." And the reports this morning from Shams are that LeBron, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Jason Tatum, Devin Booker, Damian Lillard, the biggest names in American basketball, are either ready to commit or strongly considering committing to USA Basketball for the 2024 Paris Olympics. I think that probably gets it done because we just overwhelm everybody with talent again. But, like, you start talking about LeBron, Steph, KD, they're old. Mm-hmm. Like, and this is a year away after what should be a long NBA season. Is that too old? Is that too – like, perhaps this time we were too young, but it's like, let's just bring in LeBron – KD, Steph, like all these guys 35 and up. LeBron mm-hmm. will be pushing – he might be at 40 by then. Is that too old? No. And, and we've seen them play together. And we know that they know their roles and they'll be comfortable playing in those roles. One of the things about this team is I, I don't know how comfortable everybody was in their role. Right. And so you're you're getting somebody in LeBron. You say, all right, LeBron, you'll be our four – we don't need you to get out there and get ball pressure on people. Just make it hard for them to dribble, hard for them to pass. Steph, you run the point. If you open Steph, we know you can shoot. Knock that down. KD, you'll do all of the the offensive stuff for us. If we need a bucket, you'll get the ball. You'll go out there and get a bucket. By the way, Jason Tatum is also out here as well. His length is going to help us rebound, defend, and get out in transition. All of those pieces fit a bit better than what the pieces on this team fit and and they're just better versions right. of what this team is. Anthony Davis, when healthy, is a better version of Bobby Portis sure. and a better version of who was the other big? Uh, Banchero, right? right? Uh, Steph Curry, healthy, better version of what Anthony Edwards wants to try to do. The threes that Anthony Edwards took that just didn't seem to fall, the contested uh, pull-up threes that he was taking, well, that's Steph taking them. 
Oh, those are going to go in because right. he's modeling his game after Steph. Yeah, like I, I, it'll be like one last. This is the way it's being described: like one last Olympic hurrah for LeBron. Although with Steph, did you know this? I didn't know this. He's never played in the Olympics. Steph has played for USA Basketball, but he's never played in it an was Olympics. World Cup. Yeah, he's yeah, never. It was. Steph Curry's never oh, that played was, in the Olympics. That team was so much fun. Also. So there's some thought, like, hey, let's come back. Okay, the United States has been humbled. But now let's bring in the the stars and let's go win one more Olympics in a glamorous city like Paris. Mm-hmm. Um, so it sounds like LeBron and Steph, the biggest the biggest American stars we have, are going to commit to that. I know people are thinking like, well, what does this mean for Jaron? Was it mean for Ja? Was it mean for Desmond? I think any of them would have to be on the short list of guys you would consider placing on your team. Jaron, because he's now a veteran of USA Basketball, and even though he didn't have a great tournament. He still does all the things that you would want a modern big to do. Just you'd like him to do them more consistently and without the foul trouble. But Jaron is a veteran now of USA Basketball. He'll be considered. The truth is, Jaws one of the 10 best American players in the world. He just is. But do they want to, do they, you know, when you are with USA Basketball, you are representing the United States. And do they, given all of Jaws off the court issues, do they even want to get involved in that? Now, it's a long time between now and then. Ja mm-hmm. could totally rehabilitate his image to some degree, you know, in a matter of months. I, I, that's what we're all hoping for. Yeah. But if you're just picking who's our most talented basketball players in America, John ja Morantz should have been on this team, should have been on, should be on any team. He's one of the five to ten best American players in the world right now. He just is. I don't care what you think about what he does on social media. He's That's the thing people forget about Ja or not – some people, they're like, because I, I had somebody ask me that. I went on, it was a radio in another market. And they were like, so um, are you expecting Ja to to bounce back and have a, a, a good season? I'm like, he had a good season. Like, what are you talking about? I didn't say it like that because I'm a guest. I'm not going to be rude. But like, John ja Morant should have been all NBA last season. Yeah. Even with whatever was going on in his personal life, he was awesome. Mm-hmm. Grizzlies finished second in the West. John ja Morant should have been all NBA if voters didn't hold Instagram against him. That's the truth. Yeah. He should be on he should be representing USA basketball. He should maybe be the face of it going forward. But do they want to deal with it? I don't know. That'll be something they got to figure out. And then Desmond makes sense because he's just he's a shooter, you know, mm-hmm. and you need shooting. And he's one of the best shooters in the world. So I don't think it's crazy. All three will not be on it. All three could. Any of the three could. Uh I suspect maybe one of them will. We'll see. There's a long time between now and then and injuries, who commits, who doesn't. But if you didn't like watching Tyrese Halliburton and Jalen Brunson represent USA Basketball, it sounds like you ain't going to have to worry. I mean, they, they might be. A- Halliburton can come back. Yeah, that's Halliburton fine. can come back. That's Brunson can't. No, but they ain't going like to be the faces of this thing anymore. No. Anthony Edwards was kind of the face of this team. Shouldn't have been. He will not be the face Good. of the next team. He Good. might be on the next team. Shouldn't. But he ain't going to be the face of the next team. The next team's coming with big-time stars, and uh, LeBron seems to want to be – um, at, at the at the the tip top of that, and barring a surprise, it, it sounds like it will be good, good, and it's it's great for USA basketball. I will say it shouldn't come to this. We we shouldn't keep needing LeBron James and these other megastars to come in. We there, should, there was there was enough talent. We talked about this with Mike. I think that Team USA is still this in this FIBA World Cup was by far and away the most talented roster on the court. Not close. Now, what but, the USA didn't have not was, the best the, team. was the best player. They didn't have the best player on the court in any given matchup. Well, Jonas was better than them. Jonas was the best player on the court when they played Lithuania. Germany had three or four dudes on the court who were better than the whoever you think was USA's best player. And then Canada had two of them. Where And I was thinking back and trying to see, all right, let's just rank the top ten individuals in this year's FIBA World Cup, and like 11 or 12 is where I get to a USA player. Like, that's mm. how far down. I don't know I about get. that. Like, I, I think, like, Shea Gilgis Alexander is clearly, I, I don't know what's it, clearly better than anybody else, anybody on USA basketball, but he's arguably better than anybody on mm-hmm. USA basketball. Um, still, um, And I, I'm only talking about this tournament. Career wise, yeah. not talking about that, what they mean on in oh, the Oh, I got, okay, I yeah, yeah, that, yeah. But just in this tournament. I hear you. Um, it, USA was still the most talented team. Had some of the best young players in the world, but wasn't the best team. Just, you know, they, these teams mm-hmm. are comparable to them for a variety of reasons. These teams are comparable. Whatever talent advantage USA basketball has, it is offset by camaraderie and chemistry and 
you know, we just throw these guys together and say, go to Vegas and work out for a couple weeks and then uh, let's go play. And there's a little more. Germany, Germany got a three year commitment there, from these yeah, Germany, there, yeah. Germany, uh, two years ago, said, hey, we got Paris coming up. We got a World Cup. Can we get a three year commitment from Tice, from you? Uh, Schroeder from yeah. YouTube. So uh, maybe Wagner. we need to look at that. Like maybe there's got to be more. Prep but that, time. I was told that they were they were doing that. I was told every summer if you you're a part of this USA pool, yeah. you go to Vegas. But and we're just we're not doing summer. it right. We're not doing it right. Yeah, like, this is all you got to know. Do we have even with LeBron and Steph watching? Just take whatever those, those players we did send to FIBA World Cup. Did we still have the most talented roster? Like we were. Open it up and let's draft teams. Our guys are getting picked first. I mean, yes, yeah, Shea's going to go at some point, and this guy's going to go at some point. But our guys are getting picked. We got, we're having we're having five of the first fifteen come off, five of the first, whatever it is. All right. Do we still have the most talented team? Yes. Then why can't we win? There, then, then there's a problem there. When you have the most talented team by far, but you can't win, there's a problem, and it, it could be a problem in roster construction. I think that was a problem. Yeah. Roster construction, um, it could be a problem with prep. Like you're not prepping the right way. You're not committed to it the right way. Just something's not right. And, yeah, we can come in and overwhelm with like, all right, let's bring in Katie and Steph and just go, and that'll be fine. But we, I, I think as a, as a thing, as an entity, you got to figure out what are we not doing because what are we not doing when our second-rate guys are there? Because our second-rate guys should still be good enough to yeah. do this, but they're not doing it. Why? How do we fix that? I don't know the answer. But that's something they've got to figure out. If not by 24, because 24 might just be the year where we bring in the studs and we just wipe them out. But then, you know, there's going to be another FIBA World Cup. And there's going to be a, how do we win without LeBron, KD, Steph? When our best of the best don't want to be there, how do we still win the medal or the trophy? you got to figure that out because that seems like something we don't, we don't know right now. Again, uh, when this thing started, we talked to Michael Ease about it. He said... It'll be a big story if they lose. Who cares if they win? Because they're supposed to win. They didn't just lose. They didn't get a silver or a bronze. You know, they they didn't medal at all. That's a problem. Uh, not the biggest deal in the world, but it's a problem and something that 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 I think should be addressed and, and certainly will be addressed. I I hope so. This is a a tough summer for you, boy, over here. I, I love me some USA men's basketball. I love me some U.S. women's soccer. And soccer didn't get to a yeah. semifinal. Basketball didn't medal. Uh, it's I'm I'm infuriated over here. I'm fuming. Smoke is coming out of my ears. I'll say this about Canada: impressive. I always wonder why Canada wasn't a bit better on the world stage than what they are. Canada, Canada. will be the biggest competition to the United States going forward. And not I said this last week, even yeah. before what happened yesterday. It's just they produce high level basketball players now. Canada beat the USA mm -hmm. uh, in their last like five games. They had the champions twice, so they played Germany twice. They had France, who they beat. They beat up on Spain. They beat the team who got the fifth place uh, in the tournament, and they beat the U.S. Like that's Canada had a tough stretch of games, and I think Canadians can hold their heads up high. Like, yo, the only team we lost to was Germany, and everybody lost to Germany. Everybody they were unstoppable. Germany, right. All right, hold your head high, then Canada. We're happy for you. Congre USA, put your head down. Hold your head. Low. USA, put your head down. Canada, hold your head up. Congrats to Dylan Brooks. Number two. There it is. Number two. Number two. Maybe, you know what? Maybe maybe the joke's on me. I'm always clowning on Bennett, but these players, there's a lot going on. Maybe. maybe. I, got, I got confused. I was like, maybe, wait, what segment are we? Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe, it, maybe it gets a little confused. You, you, are, you are a little mean to Bennett. Maybe Bennett, Bennett's little, doing a great job over Maybe here. it's a little confused. Maybe it's more confused. Maybe, hey, you know what? Maybe if I was sitting over there in charge of the buttons, I'd screw it up myself, you there's know? a lot of buttons over there's here. There's a lot push. of buttons. I need to re Maybe I need to reconsider. I'll text Ben an apology later. <laughs> Hey. Did I hit the button? Yeah, we're good. So okay. we're on story number two. All right. Okay. United States women's national team let you down. Yes. United States men's national team yes. let you down. You know who didn't let you down? Who? Coco. Thank God for Coco. Thank God Thank for, Coco. for Coco. Coco Golf is United States Open champion. Novak Djokovic as well. And it's wild because Djokovic yesterday wins his 24th Grand Slam. That is the most for any man in the history of tennis, and it ties Margaret Court for any person in the history of tennis. He is undeniably the GOAT. He beat a top-five seed to win it. And he's just sort of the secondary story because of Coco. 
Mm-hmm. She's the one on the Today Show this morning. It's Coco Goff, 19 years old, first teenager to win, teenage American to win the U.S. Open since Serena when she was 17 years old. And I know that a college football weekend will overwhelm things, opening weekend in the NFL, not just in this part of the country, but you know from coast to coast. But it did feel like Coco broke through it on Saturday. It felt like even if you were like, I love Ole Miss Tulane, I, you know, like you were aware that Coco Goff was in the U.S. Open final. She got like beat down in the opening set and then stormed back. She was all over the court. She was awesome. And I love those. I love watching people achieve their dreams for the first time. Like Djokovic winning his 24th Grand Slam. That's cool. But it's like, he did it 23 times early. <laughs> this is Coco's first. It will forever be her first. I just sort of on Saturday morning, I don't, the, 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 I, I get on a computer and I start doing, and then just it takes me places. And um, somehow I ended up on Andy Roddick's US Open um, win in 2003, I believe. It's the one time he won the US Open. Maybe it was 2013. I don't know. It was 2003, I think it was, a long time ago. And I went back and watched it uh, in just the final game and just the, the, that emotion when you are an American who wins your first major and it's the U.S. Open. Like, what does that look like? And with Roddick, he's just overwhelmed with emotion. And Coco was the exact same thing. And then you see her after the match. Her father's crying. Mm-hmm. She said, that's the first time I've ever seen my dad cry, which I just thought was the sweetest thing in the world. Like, this man, because if your kids have never seen you cry, it's probably because you're either just not a crier or you hide it from them. Um, like my kids have seen me cry. Um, and, and yet this man who's clearly a crier cause he's crying <laughs> has hid, has like held this from his daughter. He like, I don't, and I don't know what the mindset is there. I, I don't, and there, I guess there's some thought of like, I don't want my children to see me vulnerable or see me crying. I, I actually am not bothered by that. I think there's some, um, honesty and, uh, good stuff in there. Like what, you know, crying, not nothing. I, I don't mind crying. Um, but for her to acknowledge, like, this is the first time I've ever seen my dad cry. And it's tears of joy for me. I just thought that was the sweetest moment. And, yeah. you know, if you're familiar with the backstory at all, like her parents really did dedicate their life to raising this little girl, um, which is, I guess, what any parent should do. But we don't all do that. You know, my life is not dedicated to raising my children. It's just not. My life is like I, I'm, I have a million jobs. How can my life be dedicated? <laughs> I mean, I love my children and I'm doing the best I can, but I have not. I have not sacrificed really other aspects of my life to raise my children. I'm just being honest. Um, you know, I, I, I've, I've not said I can't go to New York every week during basketball season anymore because my priority has to be my children. I say, well, of course I'll do that because it's a great opportunity and it's what allows me to provide for my children and provide things for my children that most children aren't, um, aren't allowed to do. So that's the way I rationalize it, right? Mm-hmm. But like, what's better? Would I be better off with my children having less, but I'm never in New York City? Maybe. Like, these are things I struggle with, right? My point is this. With Coco, her parents really did just drop kind of everything and just say, we have an incredible young woman who is immensely talented. She has a gift. And our life is now revolving around her. Every, our, my professional life will be tied to her professional life. Mm-hmm. And then her dad did an amazing thing at some point. He stopped coaching her. He said, I can't do this for you anymore. Like, I need, you need, I've taken you as far as I can take you. You need an outside voice. And they went and got it. And three months later, she's a U.S. Open champion. Beyond the undeniable talent, because you're going to get a lot of Serena comparisons because she's young, because she's American, because she's black. Um, she doesn't strike me as, as powerful as Serena, I don't know. I'm not a tennis expert. Like part of Serena was just she's just powerful. That serve. She's just strong and just strong, just like a just different. Yeah. Uh, Coco doesn't strike me as that exactly, but again, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but she's undeniably special, and she's I think she's been a star for a few years now. Mm-hmm. But she just, she's broken through with this run, and the way it's not just the on the court stuff. She's like an impressive young woman. Even the way she handled the protest the other night in the semifinals, I guess it was, Mm -hmm. I thought was just wise beyond her years. And I don't think she was coached on that. I just think she's she's an impressive young woman. 
Like if you if you had a daughter, you'd want her to grow up to be exactly like this. Take tennis, set it aside. Just she just seems like an impressive young woman, and now an undeniable sports star. Um, it, it it happens to line up. You know, we we lose Serena, it appears, uh, but we might have the thing here that captures our attention for the next decade in in women's tennis. Uh, the the post match stuff was great. The in match stuff was great. Her acknowledging that she was motivated by her haters. I, I don't have much use for that in the sense that when she says things like, I know people didn't think I could do this. It's like, well, sure, I guess there's somebody. <laughs> but most of us thought you could do it. You know, I thought you could do it. I always tell this story. Um, when 2009, North Carolina wins the national championship and Tyler Hansborough does the postgame interview. And he's like, you know, it's just really nice. You know, nobody believed in us. It's like, what? You were pre- <laughs> yeah, Hansborough? You were, you were preseason number one. You were preseason number one. You're a number one seed in the tournament. You're favored to win the tournament. Aren't you, Tyler? Weren't you the number one ranked player in yeah, your the class? Whole, the whole thing was like, what are you talking about? No, like, nobody <laughs> believed in you? Bro, everybody believed in you. We all believed in you. We all thought you could do it. We're actually like, we would have been surprised if you didn't do it. S- similarly with Coco, it's like, come on. Just because there's like one person on Twitter who thinks you're overrated yeah. or all hype. Like, that's not real. Like, you were even money to win the U.S. Open on Saturday morning. Like, I bet it. She was, I got a good price on it. It was like, yeah. she was even money against the two seed. So the whole people didn't believe, I don't have much use. But she's 19. And whatever you need to motivate you at 19 or any age, like, it's fine with me. Michael Jordan famously did this exact type of stuff. Just invent things. Like, Oh, you know, so and so disrespected me. No, he did. Then what are you talking? He about? didn't say hi to me at dinner. Yeah, like how what? dare he? Yeah. So, like, there's a track record for the greats motivating themselves sometimes by inventing things. And I'm not saying Coco invented that. You can go on Twitter and find whatever you're looking for. Mm-hmm. If you want people to tell you, take any famous person. You want me to find you something that says that they're great, or find you something that says they're terrible? I can find both of them and send you links within five minutes. Whatever opinion you're looking for, it's out there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I get it. She, I'm sure she saw somebody. But, but largely, like we all believe she could do this. We all thought for a while now this was not her destiny, but her likely path. And for her to achieve it at 19, you know, in New York City, um, and then get to celebrate in all the ways she could celebrate. There's a lot of people who watch sports, but there's a ton of people who don't. But those people who don't, they do turn on the Today Show and stuff like that. And you're about to start seeing her everywhere, everywhere. She's on the Today Show this morning, and uh, she's a star and seems like a great representative of the United States of America. I was thrilled for her. Yeah, and I think Naomi was the one we, we had Osaka tapped and said, oh, you're next after Serena, so yeah. get ready. And Naomi's and, not well, here well, raising Naomi a family, mental has, stuff. Has had mental health issues. She's uh, started a family. I, she'll be back. Oh, oh, absolutely. She'll be back. And tennis with Naomi and Coco is the tennis I'm it's here great. For. Like, I love, you know, they're, it's just true. In most sports, women's sports do not resonate like men's. It's just mm-hmm. true. Like, you can care about the WNBA, but it's not the NBA. Right. Right. You can uh, care about women's college basketball, and a lot of people do, but it's not men's college basketball like look at the buildings look at the ratings it's just not the same in tennis and maybe it's been like this for a long long time back to my childhood with Chrissy Everett and um, Martina Navratilova but women's tennis is just as big if not bigger than men's tennis Mm -hmm. like it's not it's not a second class citizen in its own sport it's like if you told me I could only watch one final the Coco final or the Djokovic final I would have wanted to watch the Coco final. Uh, no doubt. I mean, I watched them both. But, like, you know, women's tennis is, is a – if you are a huge in women's tennis, you're huge. Mm-hmm. And she's, she's – a if she's not huge already, she's about to be huge. You'll see her everywhere. And, um, yeah, it seems like – if there's any 19-year-old equipped to handle it, she seems like – she's pretty grounded. She seems like the type of 19-year-old that could handle it. So uh, congrats to her and Dylan Brooks. Number three. <laughs> Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis. Ooh. Oh, they are in hot water. Ooh, they're in hot water. <laughs> what did they do this for? Okay. I don't know. So the backstory, they were in this show a long time. Se- that 70s show? I didn't watch it. I'm sure Neither it was great. I. I'm sure it was great. Neither did I. I'm sure it was great. So one of their co-stars in the show, a guy named, a fellow named Danny Masterson, right? 
And apparently, when he was younger, Danny Masterson, this guy, used to rape a lot. Those are the allegations. He was into raping, all right? He would, the allegations are he would sometimes drug and then rape. He would drug and rape. Yeah. Bill, Bill Cosby stuff. Yeah. And uh, he's convicted, by the way. There's multiple allegations against him. He's convicted. This isn't like, uh, this isn't even like, a, well, you know, innocent until proven guilty. He's been proven guilty. At least he's been labeled guilty by a jury of his peers. So the sentencing comes. And I guess when you're uh, going to be sentenced, uh, you can ask uh, for people, you can ask for anybody to like write you a letter to be read in court or be submitted to the jury or the judge, however that works. I don't know. I've never been asked to do it. I hope I never have to. And you can, uh, you can decline, obviously, or you can write a letter and you can just say, hey, your honor or jury or again, I don't know how it works. And you say, uh, hey, I know these are serious allegations, but I just want to tell you, my experiences with so-and-so, uh, he could not be more pleasant and perhaps he's made mistakes, but... Uh, you know, send this guy away to jail for 30 years would be to rob him of his life. He's a good husband. He's a good father. Um, he might have made mistakes a long time. Yeah, however you want to handle it, you can just write these letters. So it has became apparent over the weekend, because Danny Masterson was sentenced last week to 30 years in prison. It became apparent over the weekend that Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis, these two famous people who are married, both wrote letters on behalf of Danny Masters. So much... Uh, the criticism was so intense that they had to jump on social media this weekend and like this real somber video <laughs> and apologize. And apologize. That's a video? Oh, it's a video. I, like they're just sitting there like, so we just wanted to address <laughs> what we did. We, but we support victims. It's like, I don't know if you do. <laughs> I don't know if you do. Here's the thing. Here's the point I wanted to make about this. Because their whole thing was, listen, we're not speaking to the cr alleged crimes. He's been um, accused of them, tried, and found guilty. It is what it is. We're not speaking of that. All we were saying is that in our experiences, this ain't the Danny we know. This ain't the Danny we worked with. And oh, by the way, some creepy uh, videos of Ashton Kutcher have now surfaced, resurfaced. Oh, here we go. Oh, they go, they go get there you. There it is. They always, boy, when they start looking for you, they go. They'll find it. Oh, so you got Ashton Kutcher talking about. Can't wait for Hillary Duff, who was 17 years old at the mm -hmm. time. He's like, and she's one of the girls in Hollywood. We're all waiting to turn 18. Turn up Ashton. We know Ashton likes them young. Apparently. And there's like other videos of like Mila Kunis saying, yeah, my first kiss was with Ashton when I was 14 and he was 19. Yep. It's yep. like, whoa. Yep. Whoa. Buddy. All right. So um, they were saying, hey, listen, we're not speaking of this. We're just saying, hey, we worked with Danny. We were around him a lot. We considered him a friend. He's a good guy, as far as we knew. Here's the thing. This is, I think, important for everybody to understand. I don't care how much you like somebody, how well you think you know them. To the extent that somebody is capable of doing these types of things, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know. So just because somebody is cool with you and you can't imagine them ever actually drugging and raping doesn't mean that they couldn't do that. Because most people who would do that would probably keep that away from you. <laughs> it's not something you'd pick up on. Like, I swear to God, and I, I don't mean to bring Bennett into it because he's not here, but, like, I've known Bennett for a long, long time. We work together five days a week. What I know of him is the best of the best. Husband, father, friend, colleague. I don't have a bad word to say about the guy. Um, and i never seen or even picked up on a hint of anything that would make me uncomfortable as it pertains to Bennett, all right? I tell you this, if he was charged with multiple rapes and convicted, and then he came to me and said, GP, can you write a letter? I'd say, buddy, <laughs> I don't think I need to get involved in this one. <laughs> Daniel Tosh has that joke where it is it is basically this, like the, the neighbors come outside during the interviews like, oh, who could have imagined? He was such a nice neighbor. It's like, well, yeah, yeah. listen, I can imagine my own mother doing some stuff. Like, if, yeah. if it happened, it happened, man. Well, like, how about but the same thing? The serial killer up in New York, they just yep. got busted, right? Yep. You got all these people coming out, and they were like, yeah, he's a little weird, but, like, I can't imagine. I could never imagine. Well, you, well here's why you can never imagine. Because you can never imagine <laughs> that somebody you know who seems normal would do outrageous things like this. All right? That's why you can never. It's like, it's just a, it's the biggest waste of a. Uh, of, of words like 
I couldn't imagine him, you know, because who could you imagine? Think about anybody in your own life that seems like a decent person. Do you realize there are people all over this world every day who seem like decent people who are doing horrific stuff mm -hmm. every day? Mm -hmm. They seem decent. They're doing horrific things every day. And then every time people go, I, I could have never imagined. Because you can't, because you, your mind doesn't take you there. I can imagine. How about this? There was a tragedy over the weekend. I won't get into the details because I don't think they're all out yet. But mm -hmm. like, it's going to be a big one. It's going to be like a, it's going to be a big one. Um, there was a shooting in Kyreville, right? And do you know about this story? No. A uh, shooting in Kyreville. It sounds like a domestic situation. Um, I'll wait till the details are public. Yeah. That'll probably be later today. But what you're going to find, well, I promise you when this story, when all the names are filled in and everybody knows what happened, you're going to see somebody on local news, and you know what they're going to say? Who's this guy who has allegedly shot and killed his wife? and shot and killed another man. You can probably connect the dots and see oh. why a husband might shoot his wife and wow. shoot and kill another man. Yes. All right? Uh, well, the, the man, by the way, is in, in the hospital at Regional 1, not dead. Oh, I, sh wow. I should re, um, state that. But the, the woman is dead, all right? So you're going to see on the news, this guy's picture is going to be on the news at some point today, I would assume, right? Mm -hmm. And um, he's going to be charged with murder. And it's like the murder of his wife. And the shooting of another man. And you know what you're going to see on this? You know what you're going to see people say? Couldn't have imagined it. Right. It's such a nice guy. Do you think if we could hop into the cinematic universe for a second and go up to the people who own uh, the Dalmatians and be like, hey, you you know your friend Corella DeVille is over here drowning puppies? <laughs> They'd be like, oh, wouldn't have imagined uh, Corella Devil or DeVille is drowning puppies. What? Are you kidding me? I guess here's where I bottom line it. If you ever have a friend who is a convicted of violent rape, several, <laughs> multiple, and they ask you for a letter, just stay out of it. It ain't none of your business. It ain't none of your business. Hey, can nothing good come out of it? And if Ashton and Mila didn't understand that before last week, well, they certainly understand it. Pretty now. sure they don't shower either. Yeah, that was a weird. There's a lot of weird stuff going on with them. They meet at a, like, like I don't mind them being. So Whatever they are, six years, five or six years difference in age. My wife and I are five, nearly five years in age difference. But like, I met my wife when she was 19 years old, you know, yeah. not when she was 14 years old and I was 19 years old. So that's kind of not great. That's hot. It's, it's just uh, a lot of, and then they don't bathe properly, mm -hmm. at least not for my taste. And now they're writing letters into, not in defense of, but in support of a convicted rapist. We might need to take a look at them. Oh, yeah. It might be time for us to take a look at them. Number four. Penny Hardaway landed a commitment from a top 100 prospect in the class of 2024 this morning. His name's Jared Harris. 6'2 shooting guard. Uh, ranked 76 in 24-7 sports composite ranking. I'm not going to pretend like I'm an expert on Jared Harris. I never even knew this person existed uh, before he popped onto my recruiting radar. Um, I did see the quotes from him this morning. He, somebody asked him how, uh, how he would describe his game. He said, just like Penny's game. Me and Penny are about the same coming out of high school. <sighs> no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if people understand how awesome Penny Hardy was, was in high school. No. I, had, I believe it was Bill Self one time told me that Penny Hardaway is the best high school basketball player he's ever seen. Really? Bill Self tells a hilarious story. He's an assistant coach at Oklahoma State. Leonard Hamilton is the head coach. Mm -hmm. Bill's alma mater is Oklahoma State. Yeah. He said, Leonard, he, and coaches will tell you this, they'll say Leonard Hamilton's one of the greatest recruiters of all time. Just mamas love him. He's great. Yeah. Leonard is great. Bill said, so Leonard thinks we can get in there with anybody because Leonard can get in there with anybody. He's the best. Leonard's the best. He said, man, we went to Memphis on a recruiting in-home visit for Penny Hardaway. He's like, I, I want to make, I don't know if I have it exactly right, but it, it was like, we went there and Larry Finch was there. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, I told coach, talking about Leonard, he's yeah. like, coach, this is over. Like, it, it was either like Elliot Perry was there or Larry Finch was there. It was like basically Memphis was there monitoring yeah. our in-home visit. He's like, coach, we are wasting our time. We are not getting this done. But as Bill tells the story, he's like, Penny Harvey is the best high school player I've ever seen. I've never seen anything like it. 
So, is Jared Harris good? Sure. Top 100 in the country. Yeah. Could he be wonderful for the Tigers someday? Absolutely. I hope so. Is he the same as Penny Hardaway coming out of high school? No. First off, he's like five inches shorter. Right. Let's start there. But um, class of 2024 commitment, uh, you, you never know these days with these things. Like, it's a long time before he actually enrolls. But uh, it's a good development. Penny Hardaway has uh, loaded up for 2023-24 season uh, with a lot of transfers, most notably Jordan Brown, Javon Quinterly, and now he's got a high school prospect scheduled to join the program in advance of the 2024-25 season. Jared Harris, a combo guard, six foot two, from the state of Texas. Number five. Oh, Mel Tucker. How oh, good old Mel Tucker. Oh. oh my God, this guy. Mel Tucker has been suspended as Michigan State's football coach as an investigation continues to unfold into allegations that he committed sexual misconduct with Brenda Tracy, who is, I think, quite clearly the most famous, I hesitate to use that word, it's a bad word, you get, you get the point yeah. I'm making, no. most well-known yeah. sexual assault survivor in the world of college athletics. As she's told the story many times, she was gang raped. I hate to use these words. I'm sorry, but I'm just, this is the story. She was gang raped um, when she was a young woman by football players. And she has spent her adult life um, advocating um, for sexual assault survivors and also educating athletes on college campuses all over this country um, ab about like what is consent, what's not consent, what's okay, what's not okay. You know, you need to, you, you need to, and so all, all over the country, people fly this woman in to speak to their teams. So Michigan State brings her in. And at some point, this relationship between Brenda and Mel Tucker becomes something less than professional or more than professional, depending on your perspective. I don't think there's any doubt it becomes what anybody could reasonably deem inappropriate. It's a married man of 20 years. But beyond that, and I think this is the most important thing for people to realize. Brenda Tracy is not just some woman he met at a bar. She's being paid by Michigan State to come speak. And guess who approves that or doesn't approve it? It's, Mel Tucker can say, we need to pay Brenda Tracy 10 grand to come speak, or we need to never have her speak here again. Like he's putting, by, you know, indirectly putting money in her pocket. He's hiring. He's in charge of hiring her. This is why Bobby Petrino got fired at Arkansas. It's not because he was... Um, cheating on his wife, that won't get you fired from your job un unless, in a vacuum. You're a football coach. You have an affair with the woman at the hotel bar. Um, that might cost you your marriage, but it won't cost you your job. It just won't. Football coaches go through this. Basketball coaches, uh, humans, go through this every day. But what Bobby Prino did is like this woman worked in the athletic department. He's the highest paid employee in that athletic department. There's a power imbalance there. Mm -hmm. He has control over her life in some ways. You can't cheat with that person. You, you lose your job, and he did. This is where Mel Tucker finds himself now. This woman is not technically an employee of Michigan State, but she was on the payroll getting, you know, um, compensated from Michigan State to, to be there. And he starts this relationship with her. Now, the one thing they both agree on is that they were spending a lot of time on the phone, talking for 35 minutes at a time. And that's just, I say this not as a perfect person, but just I think we can agree, like that's inappropriate. You know, he's a married man. You shouldn't be on the phone with somebody you're not married to. Probably for, for you shouldn't be married with, uh, on the phone with somebody you have a professional relationship with for 35 minutes late at night, you know, several times a week. They spent a lot of time talking and whatever boundaries were there at first became uh, uh, blurrier. They got, they got friendly. They got very friendly. Yeah. And I think they both agree, quite flirty, right? Okay. Where the stories diverge is Brenda Tracy says at some point we were on the phone and he, again, these are all just technical terms. And I'll, I'm not joking around here. I'm just using the technical terms. He started masturbating on the phone with her. Mm -hmm. All right. She says, I, like, I didn't know what to do, but 
obviously wildly inappropriate. Mel Tucker says, that happened, but it was consensual. We were having phone sex. Whatever you think of me as a man or husband, that's one thing. But this was a consensual act. The idea that I did this without permission, that's bananas. Not true. All right? First, let me make this clear because this is why Mel Tucker will never coach again. Even what he admitted to, even what he said is, even if you believe his version of events, which I don't know that you should. In fact, I don't know that you should. Um, but even if you do, if you're like, I believe Mel Tucker, well, he is still getting fired because what you are admitting to there is a sexual relationship, not just outside of your marriage, but with somebody who is a de facto employee of Michigan State, given that she does things for us that we pay her to do. That's game, set, match. Mm -hmm. That's over. I don't know who was advising this guy. And I'm not, I want to be clear, I'm not saying he should have lied. I, 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 but I'm just saying, I don't know why he didn't. I don't know why you don't, you're an, unless you think she recorded you, which is a whole nother deal. But once he said what he said, it's over. I don't know why you don't just say, didn't happen. I don't know what she's talking about. Prove it. And then you might have a fighting chance. But once you say, I didn't sexually assault her. It was uh, consensual. All right. Well, maybe you didn't commit a crime, but you did commit a fireable offense. Okay. Because you know what his contract says? And this is a contract with $80 million left on it. $80 million, roughly. Yeah. In the contract, it says the contract can be voided. He could be fired for cause. That means you don't get another penny. And right now he's suspended without pay. It is likely Mel Tucker never gets another penny, not one cent from Michigan State. They owe him roughly $80 million. Now, they might pay him to not file a lawsuit, like, hey, we'll give you $3 million, just, we'll give you five, just make the, don't sue us. But, like, if they wanted to dig in, they don't have to give him another cent, and I think they'd probably be on the right side of that. Because in the contract, it says the contract can be voided, and it's a fireable offense for cause. If he does anything that could reasonably be considered embarrassing to the university. Mm-hmm. Masturbating on the phone with the most famous sexual assault survivor in college athletics, I think could reasonably be called embarrassing mm -hmm. as a married, in addition to just also as a married man. That's embarrassing. People are making jokes about Mel Tucker all day yesterday. That's embarrassing. Contract says he can be fired for cause if he embarrasses the university. Seems clear that he's done that. Yeah. So I won't get into the thing everybody else is getting into. Like I heard a lot of this. What was he thinking? Well, the whole world is made up of people who ruin their lives yeah. over sex or things connected to sex. Yeah. Mel Tucker ain't the first. He won't be the last. This is a story as old as time. So that's just a wasted. That's a fun question to ask. How stupid is Mel Tucker? I don't know. How stupid was Bill Clinton? How stupid was any? How stupid was Bobby Petrino? Hell, you yeah. told. How stupid the, was Hugh Freeze? The last segment. Uh, not last segment, but number four. Like how stupid was 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 my man? Right. He had, he had everything. Right. He had a hit show on Netflix and everything, and then boom, all yeah. of it goes yeah. away. Yeah. So it's just a wasted conversation. Like how how could you do this? I don't know how you could do it. Except people do it every day. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know how you could do it other than like people do it every day. Mm -hmm. As they say, it's uh, what's the cliche? It's undefeated, right? So, uh, you, you know, here's another example of a guy who lost his way a bit. I bet he feels awful because in addition to – he just lost his job, mm -hmm. all right? He just lost $80 million. Mm -hmm. I don't want to speak to his family situation, but I bet you that's not fun right now, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Hopefully if they want to work through it, they can. But I bet it's not fun right now. And so the people ask, well, what, what was he th – he wasn't thinking. Or at least he – people get caught up in stuff all the time. As for whether he actually committed a sexual assault or not, I don't know. Like, you know, they, these are two people who have very dramatically different stories. And I'll let other people decide who you want to believe or who you not want to believe. But the, the main point as it pertains to, like, Mel Tucker's future is to understand is that it doesn't even matter whose story you believe as it pertains to whether or not he's going to coach at Michigan State again. Because even his version of events gets him fired. Even his story as told, you go, you could, you could do this. Mel, I believe you, but now you're fired for cause because what you just told me, just like Jaws Buddy. Mm -hmm. Jaws Buddy goes and testifies, um, does a deposition, and basically incriminates himself. Yeah. He says, uh, yeah, I punched the guy. They said, did you feel threatened? No. 
Did you think he was about to punch you? No. All right, well, you just admitted to committing a crime. Now we're going to charge you with a crime. Yeah. This is the same thing Mel Tucker just did. He just admitted to committing a fireable offense. Like, even if what you say is true, we can fire you and void $80 million, and that's what they're in the process of doing right now. It, it feels like it's the same story coming from both sides. It's just different interpretations the of, stories, of what happened and how, The what, stories what the line were. up. It was the, it's the exact same It's story. like, it, okay, you're both telling your stories, right? Like here? And you're both telling your stories, and they're both like the same story. Yeah. Everything matches up, and then you get to this point, and she's like, "He told me he was erect, and he was touching himself, and he was pleasuring himself, um, and I did not mm -hmm. consent to that. I did not think that was okay." And he's saying, "Oh no, yeah, she she did consent to it, and she did think it was okay." That's where the stories diverge. Yeah. It's like eh, everything's cool, but then we get here, and and now he's committing sexual assault, and he says, no, I wasn't. I was having a consensual act. I wish I wouldn't have done it, but it was consensual. I'll let other people figure out who's telling the truth. The point is, even if he's, even if he is telling the truth, he's done. He's done. So uh, just, you know, again, this is not unique to Mel Tucker. He's the face of it now. People, it'll be somebody else next week, ruin their life over something like this. Um, but, buddy. To go from signing an $80 million contract, I mean, it's $95 million contract. Mm -hmm. There's about $80 million left on it. To do that, like... And, and no way for Michigan State to get out of it. That was the other thing. He could have lost every game for the rest of his life. All he had to do was not do this. He could have lost every game for the rest of his life, and it's $80 million they got to pay mm -hmm. you. Now they don't have to pay you a penny. Mm -hmm. Whoa! That's, I think they call that fumble in the bag. <laughs> Coaches always talk about ball security. He didn't secure it. What a mess. What a mess. That's an expensive phone call, buddy. You know, I've had some bad phone calls in my life, but never one that cost me $80 million. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. You know what? Hopefully he'll learn from it and become a better man, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's all we can hope for. That's all, that's all we can hope for. Or, or, or hopefully, hopefully. If he committed sexual assault, then he's held accountable for that. Yeah. You know what? That too. Yeah. That too. I don't know what I'm hoping for. I just hope I never cost myself $80 million. That's what I'm hoping for, really. Mm -hmm. Maybe what I meant to say is I, maybe I can learn from his mistakes. That's, that's the hope, that we learn from his mistakes. Let's never – let's make an agreement right now between two coworkers. Okay. Let's never do anything to cost ourselves $80 million. Deal. Deal. I can make that agreement. Deal. I'm going to make him pick uh, Monday Night Football next. Be back in a second. Get your Mardi Gras beads ready. Fat Tuesday Memphis is now open. The world's most famous daiquiri bar is opening on Main Street and will be the official pregame party destination for your Memphis Grizzlies. Try the famous Fat Tuesday 190 Octane, Cat 5 Hurricane, or Miami Vice, or create your own signature drink with 12 delicious flavors to choose from. Grab your friends and book your next birthday party or girls' night out at the new Fat Tuesday Memphis, located at 8 South Main Street, where we get the party started. Game number one at FedEx Forum, the home opener, the New Orleans Pelicans. They put New Orleans in the last couple of seasons in some key matchups, put them on national TV. They're trying to develop that rivalry between these two teams that are so close together. Hey, Grizzlies fans, be sure to tune in to Grizzby, where the panel and I break down all things Grizzlies and take a look at the rest of the NBA as well. The show is live every Wednesday, 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Memphis fans can now enhance each moment of their day with the refreshingly luxurious taste of Cintron sparkling flavored energy beverages served exclusively at FedEx Forum. Cintron World is a lifestyle beverage brand inspiring everyone to create their lives with intention, energy, and style. As the official partner of the Grizzlies, Cintron is offering a 10% discount on your next online order when you use promo code GRIZZLIES10 at CintronWorld.com and follow the lifestyle on social at Cintron World. Drink it, live it. I don't think I've ever had to count calories in my life. And oh my God, it's squeegee day! I don't know if I can continue a show. Like instead of paying for therapy, I think I could just sit and watch a window be squeegeed and like repeat a mantra to myself. 
And I might be cured. It, it is very zen. Tune in to the Jessica Benson Show with CJ Hurt live every weekday at 8 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Don't put off getting your oil changed, Memphis. The Grizzlies' official partner. Take five oil changes faster than you think. There's no appointment needed. There isn't even a waiting room. Yep, you heard that correctly. Take five oil changes so fast you don't even have to get out of your car. You can take advantage of Take Five's fast, friendly, and simple service at any of their locations across the Memphis area. And remember, at Take Five, you stay in your car because they're faster than you think. That means you won't even have time to show off your perfect jump shot or your killer crossover. Take Five, the stay in your car 10-minute oil change. The next thing to watch in this Mel Tucker deal. You didn't think I was done with S, did you? I did. Where are we going? <laughs> okay. So, again, I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm talking about this as seriously as I can talk about it, although it's it's a ridiculous thing to talk about. He's 51 years old, Mel Tucker. Mm-hmm. All right? The allegation against him by Brendan Tracy is that I'm just on the phone with this guy. Next thing you know, he's telling me he's erect and he's uh, masturbating on the phone. All right? It's just like he just started doing this. I don't know. This is crazy to me. Like, of all people, I'm a sexual assault advocate. What, what are you doing? Right? That's her, that's her allegation. I'll be interested to see if any other women come forward. With it. Here's what I mean by this. I don't kink shame. Whatever you're into, you're into. It's fine. As long as it's consensual, get into it. Yeah. Have a blast. All right? But if this is your kink, if this is your thing, and, and he really did do what she said he did, how about this? If you're comfortable enough to do this at 51 years old with a woman who isn't consenting, you've done this before. Uh, this is not probably not the first time. Right. It? So 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 I'm not saying and, – and if no women come out, then that means he's telling – I don't know anything. I don't know anything about it. But I bet you if Brenda Tracy is telling the truth, this ain't the first time he's done this. Yeah. If this is the thing that you're into, if this is like – if this is the thing that gets you off – you didn't just start it with Brenda Tracy when you're 51 years old. Like, this is probably something you've done with other people before. Mm-hmm. Keep an eye for these other women coming out. Can't imagine he'd do it. He seemed like such a nice guy. That's what Ashton Kutcher said. Why, wait till Ashton and Mila write a letter in defense, in support of <laughs> Mel Tucker. What if that's what they started doing now? They just started writing letters in support of every... Of every just questionable <laughs> human being, an yeah. outright bad person. Yeah. They were like, uh, 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 dear jury, um, we just wanted to write on behalf of Mel Tucker. <laughs> We've never actually met Mel Tucker, but we did work on that 70s show once upon a time. And we just think sending Mel Tucker... Uh, what if Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis just started writing letters in support of every questionable character in America? Mm-hmm. That was their new thing. Yeah, I think they could make money off of that. They could probably. We, not only did we work on that 70s show that one time, but <laughs> Mel Tucker beat Michigan that one time. <laughs> like, how, surely nobody who's beat Michigan they'd can be, be that. They'd be the first people to come out in support of Danny Masters and, <laughs> and Mel Tucker. <laughs> What if Ashton could, if he had like a real sense of humor, like if he was really funny and didn't care about the pushback, Ashton Kutcher should jump on Twitter and be like, um, hey, I do have one thing to say about Mel Tucker. <laughs> no, don't do that. So ridiculous. Watch out for these other women. If you're 51 years old and you are pleasuring yourself without consent on the phone with a woman yeah. you've never even been intimate with. That's their, that's their story, too. They've yeah. never even been intimate. He just started randomly like, hey, I'm going to. There is no way that's the first time you've ever done that. If you are comfortable enough to do it with her mm-hmm. at 51, there is no way that's the first time you've done that. I'm waiting for the other women. Do you think there's other women? I don't want to recklessly speculate about something oh, so uh, serious. Oh, I understand. But no, that's actually the smart and professional thing to do. I'm not smart nor professional. Yes. Yes, I do think. And not only do I think that there are other women, I bet people knew and that so, this was this was the thing when you got them. And some some people in the chat, uh, <clears throat> Carrie in the chat is you know, Deshaun Watson. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not surprising to me that if there were one of those women, there's like 20 of those women. Because mm-hmm. if that's the thing you're into, it ain't just a one-off. If that's the thing you're into, it ain't just a one-off. 
I bet there's other women. Yeah. Boy, I wish we still had Outside the Lines on. Oh, Outside the Lines. Such a great show. This would be so good for Outside the Lines. Yes. Rest in peace to Outside the Lines. Yes. Is it gone? I don't know. I don't watch ESPN. <laughs> if it's not gone, I know it's on the way out. <laughs> Rest in peace to um, Mel Tucker's career and Outside the Lines. Yes. Let's do GP's carryout. It's time Wonder for how it's gonna get out of that. Carryout. One final segment filled with stuff to take with you. It's not everything you need to know, but it's most of it. What did we learn today? A whole bunch of stuff, but the main thing, CJ and I have made a pact. And our pact is that we're never going to do anything to cost ourselves $80 million. Can you promise me that? I could put that on my honor as a gentleman, and that's my most solemn oath. I'm going to take it then. Yes. I'm going to take it. I believe you. Just don't. Ugh. And I'm not even like, again, to circle back. It's very easy to make your jokes, except that people ruin their lives mm-hmm. for uh, over things like this all the time. All the time. And um, Mel Tucker is just the latest. I feel I, I, like these are such complicated things. That I, I don't feel sorry for him. Like if he, if he actually sexually assaulted this woman over the phone, then like, no, I don't feel sorry for him. He deserves everything he gets. But I, I don't like watching people screw their lives up. I don't like that. It's not fun. Mm-hmm. But this guy's. there was a moment not too long ago where he was being offered a $95 million contract. Can you imagine? Like, they, like oh my God, how did I get here? And now look where he's at today. He's, he'll never coach at Michigan State again. He might never get another penny. And I'm certain the family life is tough. I bet it's... Mel Tucker went from, man, wouldn't it be great to be Mel Tucker, to, oh my God, aren't you glad you aren't Mel Tucker, in a span of like a couple of years. That's a tough... Yeah, you're, you're such a good person, man. Because my, my dad and I got on the phone immediately and cracked the jokes. Because it like, couldn't happen to a better university, couldn't happen to a better program. Hope they find somebody just as terrible. I just don't like watching people screw up it. their lives. I can do it. I don't like it. I can do it with a smile on my face. I don't like All it. All that trash was talked about beating Michigan that one time. All right, good. I don't now like it. You. Here you are. I don't like it. I don't like watching people ruin their lives. I don't take any joy in that. I'm, I, he, I need help. He, he did it to himself, you know, right? You know? So I'm not going to. Did it to himself, but. Oh, boy. Two month, three months ago, if I asked you, who would you rather be, Dylan Brooks or Mel Tucker? It's not even close. You'd be like, man, I want to be Mel Tucker. Now, who would you rather be, Dylan Brooks or Mel Tucker? Easy. It's not even close. Mel Tucker literally did it to himself. Did it to him. He likes to do it to himself. <laughs> did it to himself, dog. Can't do it to yourself. Not like not, that, Mel Tucker. Not without consent. Not without consent, buddy. You just asked. You could have just asked. Just they're gonna, they're texted gonna have to, it or something. They're going to have to get rid of those Tuck Cummins shirts. I still sense. don't understand. Like if you, I know he had a lawyer. He had to have had a lawyer. But he, yeah, the lawyer was trying to stop this from coming out. I know, but if, I, if I'm the lawyer, I swear to God, I think I, I, I sit down with Mel Tucker. And I'm not advocating lying. I want to be clear. But if I'm the lawyer, mm-hmm. I sit down with Mel Tucker and I say, okay, this is what she's accusing you of. Um, I don't need to know whether you did it or not. Not yet. We'll talk about that later. Does she have any proof that you did this? Did, do you think she was recording you? Did she, is, was it on FaceTime? Does she have any proof that you did this? Uh, I don't. I don't know. Then we're gonna say you didn't do this. You got to say this did not happen. Because if you say it did happen, even if you say it's consensual, you're done. So you gotta say it can't. It didn't happen. I don't know why he didn't say. Just say didn't happen. Figure because it out. I bet he thinks there's there's proof that it did. Yeah, there's gotta be proof. Like, if if, if if there is no proof and he still admitted to what they just this is the dumbest 80 million dollar loss you've ever seen you just gotta say it didn't happen you guys can fight you guys can it's a baseless allegation the idea that a lawyer would let him say what he said knowing that that's going to end his career seems crazy to me mm-hmm. it seems like your lawyer would just be like you can't hey so what is your version well, it was consensual. So you ad- you you are going to admit you were masturbating on the phone with Brenda Tracy. Yeah, you can't do that. You're, you're, you're fired. You will yeah. be fired. You got a different story? Let's try to tell a different story. <sighs> what did we learn today? A whole bunch of stuff. A whole bunch of stuff. Most important thing, don't be a creep ever. 
Yes. But especially when you got an $80 million contract, because then it's very expensive. What's today's biggest game? Are you ready for some football? Yes, I am. A Monday night party? Yes. Bills Jets, MetLife Stadium, East Rutherford, New Jersey. Kick a schedule for 7-15 tonight. Watch it on ABC or ESPN. Buffalo minus two. Totals 45.5. How are you going to act? Do you believe in Aaron Rodgers or are you a skeptic? I do believe in Aaron Rodgers. I don't think he gets a job. Da, da, uh, don't think he gets a job done this week. Buffalo, I think, is pretty good. That's a legit AFC Championship game type of contender. So you you lay in two points. I'll I'll lay the two with Buffalo. What's that? That team? What's the total? Forty five point five. Yeah, I, I'll take the over on that also. CJ says take Buffalo minus two. Take the over forty five point five. Bills Jets tonight, seven fifteen on ESPN. What are we watching on TV? I guess we're watching Monday Night Raw. I mean, I'm probably watching Jets. Probably watching it's good TV night. Real good TV. I did watch a I did watch a movie over the weekend. Have you seen this movie? No Hard Feelings. Jennifer Lawrence. You no. hear about this movie? I've heard about it. Didn't watch it. It is. It's not that easy. It's just easy watch. Okay. Like if you if you want to watch an hour forty five minute movie and not have to think about anything. It's oh, just, I love those movies. Yeah, it's just turn fun. your mind off. Yeah, but it yeah. was uh, it's weird in the sense that it, it it's it feels like a raunchy comedy for about two thirds of it, yeah. and then it gets all sentimental and kind of sweet. I just I would have rather just stay on that track. But it was kind of I watched it. It was kind of it's right. fine. I'd recommend it. I don't know if I it's fine. I like Jennifer Lawrence. Mm-hmm. I like Jennifer Lawrence. So I watched that. If you're looking for a movie that's sort of mindless, it's on. It was the number one on Apple T, on uh, Apple Movies to rent. It was number one. So I said, okay. well, let's start with number one, right? So it started there. It's fine. Tonight, Monday Night Raw, 7 o'clock USA Network. Scope Arena in Norfolk, Virginia. Mm-hmm. Main event, Jey Uso should be in the building. Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Cody Rose, Seth Rollins, Rhea Ripley. Raw was here not too long ago. Yeah. We had a blast. Now you can watch it tonight, 7 o'clock USA Network. What's the best thing we've read? I mentioned that Yahoo story on Dylan Brooks shooting in the FIBA World Cup uh, earlier in the show. The man who wrote it was Jake Fisher. It's really well done. It gets into all the background on Dylan Brooks, uh, not necessarily remaking his shot, but really focusing on some very specific things with his shot leading up to the FIBA World Cup that seemed to pay off. So if you haven't read that yet, you can find it. Jake Fisher, Yahoo Sports. What's on tap for tomorrow? Well, tomorrow's going to be Tuesday. That means Chris Vernon going to be in studio with me in the first hour. We'll look back at Monday night football. Jets, Bills. Should be a fun show. I'm looking forward to it already. What if those women come out? There's more of them by tomorrow with Mel Tucker. It usually, it usually takes it takes a, a few week days. Or so yeah, it's going to take a few Deshaun, days. Deshaun, it was like it was one. Then a week later, it was two. Then it was five or six. It's like, oh gosh, when is this going to stop? If you had to bet a hundred dollar bill, there will be another allegation made against Mel Tucker in the next month. Yes or no? Yes, I would too. Yes, I would too. I would too. I'd bet his $80 million contract on it. Woo! God, this guy. Did it to himself. Without consent. You gotta get consent, man. Gotta get consent. Just text it over. Just be like, do you mind? Something. There's just gotta be a way Louis, to. Got Louis C.K. You got Louis C.K. Although, according to Louis, according to a lot of the Louis C.K. stories, I'm not saying this is right or wrong, but like, he would often ask for permission. It was just like he would ask permission from young comedians who didn't know how to say no to Louis C.K. Because of the power dynamic. That's right. That same thing with the Mel Tucker situation. But like with Louis C.K., the, the stories are that he would often like actually ask, can I do this? And they'd be like, oh, I guess, I guess so. Mm-hmm. Mel Tucker didn't even ask, according to Brenda Tracy. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your day. I maybe. We'll be back here tomorrow at 10. Till then, be careful. Be, be kind. Be good. Rep your hood.